Okay, good morning. Uh, last time we discussed the uh, discrete, uh, discrete time uh, systems, uh, signals and systems. So any questions? No questions? Everything's good? Okay, today we are going to discuss uh, uh, properties right, for discrete time system. Uh, we already know the properties for continuous time system. So very similar. Uh, so I will ask you to be more active right, into this class. Right, the first one is uh, memory list. Uh, the output yn and the input xn. Anyone can I explain what is memory list? So the output was uh, output uh, depends on input xn at only only at uh, time n, right? Not future, not past. So this is uh, memories. Right? Some examples. Uh, the first one is. Uh, Square is this memory list? Y n equals uh, x n squared. Is this memory list? Yes, right? Because this is only n, not n plus y, not n minus y. Right, the second one is uh, uh, ideal delay. So n minus n sub d. Here is n sub d is not equal to zero. If n d equal to zero, then that is just all pass filter. It's not a delay. Uh, n d is not equal to zero. For example, if n d is positive, then that means uh, we need. Uh, the output at time n need the, the input at uh, future or past, past. If n for n d is greater than zero, that's, that's in the minus this one. So that means in the past, right? For example, y n equals x n minus 10. So n d is greater than zero, so that is in the past. And if n d is less than zero, so that means we need the input value in the future. But either way, if it's not equal to zero, then this is not a memory system. Next one is a moving average. Moving average y n equals m1 plus m2 plus 1 and the sigma uh, k equals negative m1 to positive m2 and uh, x n minus k. Does this system have memory or not? You already hear M, M1, M2, both are not equal to zero. So we do need memory, right? We need some future value and the past value. So this one is not memoryless. Uh, the next one is the forward difference. And you must remember what is forward difference. First of all, it is a difference. Forward, that means we involve in a future value. So x n minus 1 minus uh, x n. Is this memory list? No, because we need memory here. Right? This one has no memory, but this part has memory. So any questions on this? So all these are 
Now this one has memory, not memoryless. This one is not memoryless. This one, if this one is not equal to zero, this one is not memoryless, but this one is memoryless. Okay? The next one is uh, causality. So what is uh, causality? Anyone over there can tell me? The output Yn. How to define a causal system. We practice homework, right? Okay, the output uh, does not depend on future value, future input. Only depends on the input at the present time and in the past time. So that is the causal system. Okay, the first one, example. The square is that causal system. Is this a causal system? Okay, yes, because it does not depend on future value, only depends on the present. Can I see? All memory systems are causal. Yes? Yes. Can I see all causal systems are memories? No. Okay? So we'll make sure. All memory systems are causal. Not all causal systems are memories. Uh, how about this one? Y a you uh, the second here is this system causal or not? <coughs> not causal. Causal or not causal? Not causal. How do you know? How do you know is we need the future value or not? For example, this one. Huh? Y n equals uh, x n minus 10. Is this system causal? No, not causal. For example, y 100 equals uh, x uh, 90. That means the output when, t, when n equals 100 second equals uh, the input uh, at 90 second. Do we know this value? When t equals 100. Is this a future value? Which one is the future? 100 or 90? Right now we are in 100. Is the future is past? Uh, is ninety past or future? It's past. So this one only depends on the past value. So is this causal? Yes. So this is causal. How about uh, this one equals uh, x uh, m plus ten? This is not causal because we need the future value, which uh, in this case uh, n equals one hundred ten. So for this, if I give you this example here, ask you to determine if it's causal or not, you need to discuss. If ND is positive, it is causal system. If ND is negative, then it is not causal, because it, the output depends on the future value. Make sense? 
Okay. If n d equals to zero, then that is the memory list definitely code. Uh, this one. Moving average. Is this code or not? Do we need a future value? If yes, it's not a code. If no, that's a code. For which one? For the moving average, for this one. Uh, it's not a code. No code, right? Okay, example is like this. Suppose we are given all these time values. I want to calculate the output at this time, uh, that is the output at this time, then for the input, I may use from a negative m1 from here, for example, this one is 0, n, this is n minus 1, this is n minus 2, this is n minus 3. So these are the past values. But I also need to use in the use future value. This one is n plus 1, this is n plus 2, and all the way up to, to m2, so n plus m2. So we can see, if m2 if m2 is not equal to 0, or m2 is greater than 0, if m2, if m2 is greater than 0, that means we need, for example, greater than 0 means at least 1, right? So if m2 equals 1, that means we need to use the future value when n equals m uh, plus 1. So that means this is not causal. Huh? If n, m2 equals 2, then we need to use 2 in a future values. So this one is not called. But if M2 is uh, uh, equal to uh, equal to zero or less than zero, then that means we need only from here to somewhere here to here. So that is called system. So again, if you are given this question, you need to discuss. Discuss the relative value of the, the values of M1 and M2. But in general, this one is not called. You are you need to use past values and future values. Okay? Uh, the next one is uh, forward difference. Is this causal? No, this is not causal. Because right. we need to use a future value. Right. Next one is uh, Stability. Okay. I asked somebody to state what is a stable system. Okay, if the input is bounded, that is very important, then the output is bounded. If this satisfies, then this is a stable system. You can only, you cannot see. If the output is bounded, then it's a, a stable system. That's not exact. Right? If your input is out of bound, then your output can also be out of bound. But the stable system, like y equals x. y equals x, this is a stable system. Because if your input is bounded, then your output is bounded. But if your input is out of bound, then your output is also out of bound. But definitely it's a stable system. Right? Uh, this one, stable. Yes, right? If xn is less than uh, a, then yn is definitely less than a squared. Uh, for example, if xn is less than 1 million, then y will be less than 1 trillion. So that is a stable system. How about this one? Is this a stable system? We only change the time. We do not change the amplitude. So if your input is bounded, then your output is also bounded. We only change the time, or in other words, we only change the phase. We do not change the amplitude. So this one is a, a stable system. How about this one? Uh, we assume M1, M2 both are, are bounded. So M1, M2 cannot be, it cannot be infinity. 
Huh? For example, m y equals 100, m 2 equals 200. That is okay. So is this stable system? Yes, it is stable, right? You add up all some numbers in, within some range, then divide by the length of this range. This is stable system. How about the forward difference? If this one is bounded, this one is bounded, then subtraction is also bounded. So yes, this. Can you give me an example of an unstable system? First of all, any practical system must be stable. Okay. What system is not stable? Integrator. Integrator. From a negative infinity to the present time. This one, definitely. Okay. So, uh, the longer the time, then the larger the output. The output cannot be bounded. Right? That is why. Any others? Any other? Huh? Differentiator. Differentiator, but in discrete time, we do not have def differentiator. That is in continuous time. The corresponding in discrete time is the difference. Uh, forward difference, central difference, and backward difference. But this difference looks like uh, they are stable system because we involve only two values. Differentiator, that is an uh, unstable system in time. But this one, in discrete time, this is a stable system. All right, so that is it. Any other? Logarithmic. The output equals the input, uh, take the log of the input. For example, if your input equals zero, then your log will be equals uh, negative infinity. So that is uh, out of bound. Right? So logarithmic is not uh, stable system. Any others? Right? You can think about it. All right? uh, this is stable. Next one is uh, linear. What is a linear system? I want someone to, to tell us. Linear system must satisfy how many conditions? Two, two conditions. All right, the first one is called uh, additivity. Eh? additivity or superposition. Everybody knows the superposition, right? When did you learn superposition? Okay, in 110, when you analyze the circuit, if you are, the circuit has more than one sources. Now you have a voltage source, more than two, uh, more than one multi, uh, voltage source, current sources. You are going to use the superposition method to do this. Okay. How about if you are a circuit, for example, involved in diode or something, can you still use a superposition? In other words, when can you use a superposition method to solve circuit? Huh? For example, like this. Huh? I have this, us, like this one. This one is very simple, right? Okay, this is a V1. This is uh, what is the output here. So this one, for example, equals 10. What is the output here? That is what you draw. So usually equals uh, for silicon types, this is point seven, right? Right? So now I have another one, 20. Same circuit, but the source changed from 10 to 20. What is the output here? Still 0.7. Right? Then I add up together, give you a 30. Right? 30, like this. If this one is a linear circuit, the output must be equals 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 equals 1.4. But uh, in real life, this output still equals 0.7. Does that make sense? So that means this one is not a linear circuit. So you cannot use the superposition. Make sense? But if this one add up together, if you have two sources, the right? one is not 10, this one is 20, hmm? you cannot say, okay, this one 10 equals 0.7, this 20 equals 0.7, so 0.7 plus 0.7 equals 1.4. Well, that's not correct, so that is wrong. Why you cannot use the superposition? Because that is not a linear circuit. Right? So superposition can only be used in linear circuit. Uh, so that is the topic of this uh, class, so only linear circuit. 
It's called the uh, additivity. Or it's called a CU proposition. The next one, we have another property. What, what's the next one? Called scaling. Right? That means if your input is multiplied by a constant, for example by 10, then the output is also just multiplied by 10. Uh, if I give you a system, can you prove this is a linear? Right, let me give you an example. For example, this one. Right? Y n equals uh, the moving average for this one. Right? Moving average. Is this a linear system? I want everybody to try this. Right? Is this is a uh, first one you decide based on your instinct? Is this linear? Is the moving uh, moving average linear system? Yes or no? Oh, we don't know yet, right? Can you try? Some of you try the additivity. Right? The first row try the additivity. But all the second and the third try the scale to prove it this one if both satisfy. How to do this? You still remember the, the steps? Exactly the same as in continuous time. How to prove it? For C proposition, how to do that? The first one we assume x one, x one, and you are going to get a y one, which you cause a. We just copy all those, right? So m1 plus m2 plus 1, eh, the sum of uh, k and uh, from negative 1 to uh, m2 and this x1 m minus k. So if you have this input, then you get this output. So that is the first one. Second one, if you have uh, the second input, x2 n, then what we have? We are going to have a y2, which equals a 1 over m1 plus m2 plus 1, and the sum applied to mk equals a negative m1 
and to M2, X2, M minus K. Make sense? Okay. Remember this? All right. The next one will be, uh, and we have a new input, Xn. So we said this is new. Then we let this one equals uh, X1n plus X2. Right? And we are going to find out uh, what this new output. We are going to plug this input uh, into the, the system. So that one will be equals M1 plus M2 plus 1, and the one here, the K from negative M1 to M2, and the X1, just the Xn minus K, like this. Huh? That is new input, this is a new output here. And for this part, so X n equals this. So x n minus k will be just change this n to n minus k, and change this one to n minus k. So you can copy everything here, and uh, uh, copy everything here, and this one is x1 n minus k, and plus x2 n minus k. Uh, then, because the summation is linear from math and division, this constant, so we can, we are going to equals 1, m1 plus m2 plus 1 here, and the sum to x1, m minus k, and this is k from the negative m1 to positive m2. And then plus another one, and m1 plus m2 plus 1 here, and this is the sum again, k for negative m1 to positive m2, and x2, m minus k. So we just apply uh, this one. Uh, so what is the first term? This term is uh, compared to this, that equals uh, y1, right? So that is y1, eh? and what is the second term? Second term equals exactly the y2. So that means the new output will be equal to the original y1 plus the original y2. So question is, is superposition property satisfied? Yes? How did, you, how did you get from that y n equals whatever it is? This one here? Yeah, to that. Is that a from here to here? It's going way too fast. Huh? This is the question? Yeah. See, this is the, in, this is the input. So they, I'll just copy this one. You x n, I just get y n. This one here is just this one. But this x n equals x one plus x two. So I plug this one x in here. This one plus this one. I do not change anything else in the front. So this is the the system. And for this new input, this is new input. So I just directly plug the new input into the system. Then the system is just the summation and the division. Then summation and division in mathematics, they, are, they can just apply to each of this. That's called a distributive, right? right? So then this one equals the first term for x1 here. This is x1. And then the second term applied to x2. So this is distributive. Now, the first part is y1 from here. The second part equals y2 from here. So that means the new output does equal to y1 plus y2. So superposition is very wide. Question on this? Okay, the next is uh, scaling, that means you multiply by constant, but we can combine these two steps uh, into one, right? Still remember this or not? Anyone still remember how to prove this, uh, combine these two terms in together? The new the, okay, so this one is the total, not only this part one anymore, right? 
then this will be equal to e x1 plus d times x2. Then we combine these two properties together, additivity and skew. Right? So here will be this one we still copy this. This is the system. And here, this one will be A, and this part will be a B. So again, use this distributive. So this one will be a A here. This one will be B at here, right? But we know this A is a constant, so I can move this A in the front. Right? And this B also to the front here. Now, this one will be A here, this one will be B here. So now that means this one is a linear system. Question? Give you one minute to ask questions, then I'll give you a quiz. Here you go. Yes. Couldn't you just... Instead of having to do all that to all the scales, couldn't you just multiply the output by or multiply the input by a constant and see the output is multiplied by the same magnitude? Yeah, the first one is as, as we said, you don't need this one, you don't need this one. Do you follow this one, but this is only step one, right? Okay. Then you need to do step two. Okay. Then you need to do two two procedures. And if both are satisfied, then that's it. But the easier way is just combine one together. Then this is one. Verify both. Okay? So it depends on you. You can use it anyway. Any questions on this? Follow question? We'll work another one and write it big enough so we can read what that says. Okay, I'll give you another one. Example? Okay, good. I remember that. Give you another one. Can you imagine one that is not linear? <clears throat> because in the homework, I'll give you a lot of systems, right? Let you determine which one is linear, which one is non-linear. So based on, I hope everybody did that independently. So that means you have a lot of experience. So what kind of system is not linear? Can you give me one example? I said that the diode in real life is not a linear system. You cannot use it. So what is the relationship of out between output and input for a diode system? The output is just a constant, right? That is one way. Another one is, uh, for example, square, right? So example two, y equals uh, xn square. Is this one a linear system? Right? First one you guess. Is this a linear system? No. No. Anyone say yes? No one. Okay, so this is no. So how to prove this? Eh? It's not linear. For not linear, you can prove only one. Eh? So if it does not satisfy additivity, then that's it. You don't need to do the non right? If you want to prove this scaling, that's fine. If it does not set the scaling, that's not. Or you can use this method, prove both at the same time. So assume we have input x1, then the output will be, what is the output? Okay, y, y, yeah, the y1. What is the output? Huh? Pardon? This is the system, so the square, right? If the input equals x1, what is the output? Yeah, it is y1. What is it? Okay, x1 square. Make sense? No matter what your x, y is, just x, y square. Right? 
The next line is we assume x2 as the another input. I need to have two inputs. The first one, x1, then I get a y1, which equals this. Then the second input, I get this, I need to have a new y2. So what is y2? x2 squared, perfect, okay, x2 squared. This is in theory, so in real life, just like this i is the system, okay, something squared, okay? so, so square. So you have x input, you have, you have x, you have y. That is the system. Okay? You give me x1, what I have is uh, y1, I call it y1, but actually it is x1 squared. If you give me x2 here, then the output will be x2 squared, but I will write it as a y2. To so make sure I have these two. Input to output. Make sense? All right, now, next one is uh, which way you want? You want to use combine these two, or you want to use the one by one? Uh, combine, okay. So construct new input. The new input I just call is the xn. Uh, what is the new input? You don't need to think, that is uh, fixed. You need to be a writer in, to write like that. So that is the A times the first input, then plus B times the second input. You don't need to uh, think why this one. This is linear, so both A and B are constant. You need to be like this. So this is our new input. Uh, now we find out the output. So the output will be equal to what is it? What is the output? This is your input. This is your output. So what is your output? A is what? Equals x n squared, right? This is your input. This is the output. What is it? So that's x n squared. That is from our system. No question at all, right? Right. Then what is that's here is the part. We need to relate this xn to the original two input by this assumption. Okay? So that one will be equal to x equals this. So that's a x1 squared, uh, sorry, a x1 n plus b x2 n. Uh, then together square. Uh, Make sense? It's good? Everybody, questions asked, otherwise give you a test, all right? I will give you a test. Oh, okay, I'm not going to ask a question. No, I don't really care. You get this or not? No, I'm not going to ask This is good, right? <laughs> if you're still confused, tell me what's the problem. I will explain. Why that takes x squared in the... Why this is squared? Yeah, the why, yeah, why... Because xn is equal to this. Yeah, why you move it then? Why I move to where? So, this part is this one? Yes. Is it good? Yes. This is good, right? Yes. Then, what is xn? xn is this, right? So I just plug, replace this xn with all these things. So that's ax1 plus bx2, then square. Oh, you mean this is square, why is it here? Why is it not this? It's x1 square must be here, right? Uh, Everything square. Everything mm square. -hmm. More questions? Uh, Last chance. So it's not linear. Those get no, we haven't tried yet. We just, uh, this is the steps you need to follow. <laughs> uh, we, we don't know yet, although you, you can see, yes, it's not linear, because we already decided it's not linear, right? But we want to prove. So we haven't finished the proof yet. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay, now in your head you want to know what if this is linear, because we don't know. If this is linear, this one must be equal to a y1 plus b y2. Uh, this one must be satisfied. That is what our objective, right? We want to prove that this one equal to this. If we can, then that is linear. If we cannot, this one is not linear. Does that make sense? 
Uh, you don't need to write it here. Right? This one is not in the process at this point. It's at the last point, but not in here. But this one we know what we want. So we just want to see if this one equal to uh, a1 y1 n plus a y n plus b y2 n. Uh, we want to know if this one equals or not. That is our objective at the last step. If this is yes, then this one is linear. If this one is not, then that is not linear. Questions? Hello? So what's good, right? All right? So we are going to find out if this one can be related to this. Right? Now we need to use our math. This one is something square. Everybody knows how to calculate this, right? Like a x plus y squared. Can you do this? What is it? You call it x squared plus y squared. Who says yes? Plus x y. Huh? Better? Better than this one? That's it? 2x1. That's good? x plus y squared equals x squared plus y squared. If you use this only one, you're going to say, yes, yeah, that is a linear system. But actually, it equals this one. Okay? So this one will be equal to, uh, I consider this one as the x here, this one as the y here. So I, I apply that rule. So this one will be a x1 squared plus b x2 squared then plus 2 times this and that, right? So plus 2 a x1 then times b x2. Does it make sense? All right. So what's the first one? What's the first term? This one equals uh, a x squared equals what? Equals a squared x squared, right? So that one equals a squared x one squared. Plus the second term is uh, b squared x two n squared, right? Then plus here two a b two a that's b here constant move all constant to the front and x one times uh, x two so x one times x two is this good? Yes or no? Okay, now we need what we want. This one we already write here, right? This is what we want to prove. Verify. Now you ask yourself, is this one equals this? Somebody says no. How about you? Is all these lines here equals this? No. Why? Look at this one. X1 squared. Oh, that is Y1. So that is A. This is Y1. Good. But there's A squared here. So, so actually, this one equals A squared Y1. Right? Then plus, what is this? This one is B squared Y2. So B squared Y2. And we still have this term. This term is not even close to x, y1, and y2. I don't know what that is. So I just plug something here. Eh? Now, our question is, is this one equal to this? No. For 
any A and any B. You may say, oh, if A equals zero, B equals zero, yeah, they are true, right? A equals zero, B equals zero, this one zero, this one zero, this term equals zero, this one zero, this one zero, yeah, zero equals zero, okay? That's good. But as this A here must be arbitrary constant. Can be anything. So is this one equal to this for any A and B? No, right? That is not correct. It cannot be equal. So that means this is some so this one we are going to we don't need this ask, you already know that. So not equal to this. Then the next one is the conclusion. This one is not a linear system. Okay, now can you do it by yourself? I'll give you a quiz, give you a chance to earn some bonus point. Yeah, you, you know the syllabus, right? I'll give you, can give you, for the whole semester, I'll give you up to five bonus points if you can get it. Right? Right? So now I'll give you an example. Yn equals uh, xn plus one. You give me an input, input sequence. I just uh, add one to each of your number, then that is my answer. You give me an uh, input sequence. For example, Fibonacci, okay? One, one, two, three, five, eight, and so on. You give me this X. My output is, uh, I just add one to each of your input. So my, this is your X, this is your input, my output will be equals to 2, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, and so on. Hmm? Okay, you try to see if this is linear, right? First of all, you decide by your experience, your instinct, if this one is linear or not, then you just prove if it's correct. Must set, must, if it is linear, it must satisfy these two conditions, right? Additivity and skip. All right, give you three minutes. Everybody get a piece of paper. Give you. Let me think. How, how long do you need? Two minutes. All right. I'll give you fifty percent more. Three minutes. Write your name and your ID. All right. This will give you a bonus point. One point. Anyone now? Well, first one, this A must be with a square parenthesis, right? That means time. All the ends, look, there's a square parenthesis, right? For this system, the output equals the input minus the 
plus one. For input x one, the output must be the input plus one. Right? You forget this one. You change my system. Okay. Right. Super. Then this is your this is the input, right? Not the output. This is supposed to be x. What's this? This y n. Y n. You need to construct a new input, which equals a times x1 plus b times x2. So this is what you get there. Oh, OK. Yeah, so this one. But why you want this one? This one is not, not here. You don't need this. So for x1, you get this y1. For x2, you get y2. Right? You don't need this, right? This is your new input. Then you need to find the new output. So y, and also this is y1, must be here. And there, there's much parentheses. y1 not after that. And so y2 is here also like this. This is one all function time. x1, yeah, this is good. This two must be here. And this yn equals xn plus one, that is good. Okay, so now, what is this xn? equals this thing, right? So you need to plug this thing into here and to see what you have. Then compare with uh, this one multiplied by A plus this one times B to compare these two to be equal or not. Yeah, but if you do that, then you shouldn't y equal y equals two. Y, again? Yeah, what I'm trying to prove. So B should be What am I comparing to? What you need to compare is uh, once you construct the new input, you use the new input to plug into the system. Then you find out what you have. Yeah. So look at this. We construct a new input, which is this. Okay. Yeah. Now you forget about all this thing because this is the new input. Right? You have this new input, you find out the new output. Totally don't even remember all this thing. Right? You only use this input and find the output from the system, from here. Make sense? So this output will be equal to just the input square. That's the system. Don't even think about this too. Right? Then it will be equal to this. Then you simplify try to compare, okay, here's the question. Compare with what? With this one times A plus this one times B. That is what you need to compare with. First one, you need to find the new output first. Once you get this one, you compare this result with this one times A directly plus this one times B directly. Compare with this result. Forget all about the things. You just have a new input that totally forget that x1, x2 thing. 
You just use that new input to plug into the system. You suppose it's plus one, right? The system clearly says plus one. Don't think about two. Let's do it. Okay, so now this is your new output, right? right? Then we want to compare with something. Now, what's the thing? The thing is a y1 plus b y2. That is you want to compare. Now you're almost there, right? So you want to compare with a times y1. Now you need to memorize what is y1, what is y2. Eh? But the y1 times a, the y2 times b, you add this two, you get a result. You compare this result with what you have right now. Right? So your y1, so you look, a y1, right? Plus b y2. That is, you want to compare this one with this result. You want to know if this two are correct. How are you? This one you directly get from the system. Input plus one. Input plus one. You want to compare this result with uh, this thing times a plus this thing times b. Right? Now let's see what is this. A times y1 equals a. What is y1? y1 equals a. Where is your y1? Oh, you, step one, you forgot the step one. Step one is you need to have x1, then you find the y1, right? What is y1? Y1 is just x1 plus 1. Right? That is again from the system. Right? Yeah, so this is a y1. So this one must be a plus x1 plus 1. Right? And plus b times y2. What is your y2? Y2 must be x2 plus 1. This is your y2, right? This is from x2. So this one must be a x, x2 plus 1. Now you need to compare this one with the yours. With, with, with this one. Eh? So let's see this one. A is tributary. Eh? Plus A, right? Then plus B, x2 plus B, right? Make sense? Okay, now let me write it. This one, like this one here, then plus A plus B, right? And this one, this is your real output. A x1, okay, good. B x2, good. And you said you have one here. But from here, there's A plus B. Because A and B are harmful. You cannot say A equals 1, B equals 0. No, you don't say that. A can equal 100, B can equal 1,000. Anything. Uh, this two are equal. No. Can you explain to uh, this us? Okay, so everybody get correct? You see? Okay, so you have x1, perfect. You have x2, then you need to get this. Yes, probably. Okay, that's new. Okay, perfect. All right, so now this one. Okay, good. Right, up to this point. So you start at this. So this is your new output. That is perfect. This is your one. It's too good. This one is new. So we need to compare your new output. Right? For this for for clear right? it's new. Right? There's new output. You want to compare this one with what? With this one times a plus this one times b. So you want to compare this one a y1 okay, and plus b times y2. You want to compare this stuff eh, with with this one. If these two are equal, yes. If this are not, they're not. Eh? So what is this? Now let's see. We can say while this one equal to a1. Now we need to use this system, right? Because this is the first one. So this one equals uh, x1 plus 1, right? And here. This one is here. Then plus b times x2 plus 1, right? right? Because this. We want to compare this one with this one, so I want to write uh, distributive plus in, so this is x1, a1, x1, n, plus a, right? Then plus b, x2, then plus b, right? I compare, I want to compare this one with this one, with, with this one. So I will, okay, see, I will write collection terms. This one, I put this one to the back, so 
I write this first, B X two. Yeah. Then I write this A, then I write this B. This is still equal, right? So I compare this one with this one. So this term is this good? Yeah. You have this. I have this. Good. This one. Huh? I have this one. It's good. Good. Now this term, you have this one, but this one is A plus B. The question is, A and B both are arbitrary. You can say A equals 100, B equals 1000. Is this A plus B equals 1? No. So, that's not So, you can see. Uh, while this one equals this, it's not equal to YN. Because YN equals this. This one, not equal to Y. So, it's not equal to so Make sense? Mm -hmm. If these two you can prove this one equal, then that is this is this is this is the right? Everything good? Okay. Yeah. 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 You can explain a little bit, you can you can discuss, okay? I want everybody to be clear, otherwise come here next time, right? What? X1, okay, you get y1, perfect. This one, perfect. Okay, so now this is this good thing. You you don't need that one. For X bar you get Y bar. Yeah. For X two you get Y two, right? Now this is the where's your new input? New input is just this one plus this. The new input just to the sum of the just A times X1 plus B times uh, X2. Right, so you have this one here. That's not correct. Okay. So the new input Xn must be only the A times X1 then plus B times X2. Only this one. You don't, there's no, this one, this two here. Does that make sense? No, this is the output. Okay, let me let me explain a little bit here. Okay? If you go, then you discuss this everybody, right? I make sure this system is a. I want to make sure everybody clear what we, we are doing. This is your system. It's good? In this example, what is it? You have input. Then you just uh, this one add to one, right? That is our system. For here, you just um, square it. Make sense? Right, so this is y y equals this one. I ignore all the ends, okay? Because everybody everywhere you need to write the ends. So for simplicity, I ignore this. So you have input. You have this one is given. What you do is uh, you generate an uh, arbitrary input. Right? So x1, you, you call it x1. What is it? I don't know. You decide. Right? So then if this one, what, what you have here, you are going to have a x1 plus 1, right? Make sense? You can say that x1 is unit step or you impulse or like a Fibonacci. That's fine. Doesn't matter. In general, just x1. If your x1 is the input, then your output will be equals x1 plus 1. That is for sure, right? Because this is the same system here. But we call this one as y1. Means this is the output to x1. Good? That's the step one. Step two is you need to find out or create a new output, another one. Right? I use x2. And you use this new, another, I don't see new, okay, the other input here, you need to find out what is your output also, right? So your output will be definitely x2 plus 1, right? Now, I call this one as y2. Is everybody clear here? This one, your x1, after you choose, you get this one. Here, depends on the system. In this example, just add one. In that example, you need to square it, right? 
Maybe give you a log, you just take a log. But no matter what, how you get this from the system which is given. Now the next one is you need to have a new input. This new input, I just call it x. This one is not arbitrary x3. What you do is you need to use a constant which is arbitrary, you choose times x1. Where is the x1? Oh, that is this one. So you used this before, right? Now you multiply by a. Then plus a b times x2. So we know this x1 before. You choose. And we know this x2 before. You choose. Now, once you get this, for this two input, you get the two output. The next one is you need to construct a new input from this two input, which is the first one times a, the second one times b. Then add up together. Does that make sense? Now, you use this new input, you plug into this system. You are going to get a result. This result equals what? This result equals in this system is just x plus one, right? <coughs> Does that make sense? All these three you need to compute by yourself. Or measure by yourself in, in real life. In here, give you this one, you just can't calculate by yourself. Now once you get this new output you're going to compare with something. If these two are equal, then that is linear. If these two are not equal, they are not linear. So the key here is you need to compare this with the what? Is everybody clear here? We want to compare your output with something. What is that something? That something is this one times A. So A times Y1, and this B times Y2. You add these two together. See, now here, we work directly on the output, not the input anymore. So here, you directly work on the input. Then this new input applied to the system, you get a new output. You compare this new output with this one called the linear combination of the two outputs compare these two. If they are equal, it's linear. Not, not. Everybody? Good? So you sub write your name on the paper, submit this to me. Huh? Any questions before you submit? No. Huh? No more questions? Anyone? Yes? Did you follow all these steps? Uh, yeah. I know this one is not linear. You cannot just give me a linear lesson. You need to give me the steps. Because why? Because you need to know how to do this. Otherwise, I give you a more complicated system. You cannot guess it's linear or not. Then you so cannot. It's my guess, but it's not the same. Yeah. Which are not equal? Why is not equal? Which one? Uh, which one? Which one? Which one? Uh, compare. This is your new output. Yeah. I do not compare this one with this one. I'll compare this one with uh, A times Y1 plus B times Y2. So where's your Y1? Where's your Y1? See, I'll compare with this one. What is this? Is that not? Is that not exactly? Yes, okay. So I want to know where is A Y one? 
What is the one? This part is x1 and one. What is the one? Okay, this is d1. D1, 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 D1,
But the physical meaning is very easy. It's very easy to understand. You have input here at this time. You get the output some something, right? Now you delete this output, uh, this input by some time. For example, ten seconds. What you have for the output is exactly the same thing in amplitude, in everything, except delete also by ten seconds. If this is true, then that is time invariant system. Make sense? Again, we discuss only systems that are linear and time invariant. Okay? Uh,
if a linear is a system is a, okay, first one is a time invariant. Uh, if you have input xn, and suppose you have yn, then if you delay your input by some time, and your output is also just delayed by some time, then this is a, a time invariant system. Eh? Again, I said we do not need to prove this. But uh, you need to uh, be familiar with uh, typical systems. Uh, you know which system is time invariant, which system is not. For example, compression. When you store something in, for example, MP3, right? you record the video, the, the audio, you want to compress in MP3 or MP4. This compressor, for example, give you a file, one hour, you want to read very large story, you need want to repeat, uh, compress. How to compress? One way is like, for example, I'll give you these numbers, these values. Eh? For example, okay, Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci sequence is uh, uh, one, eh? one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, uh, this Fibonacci sequence. Eh? Compress means, for example, I store only one for each two. Or one each three, e, one each ten. For example, I use ten. So this is the input. This is the output here. I pick only the first one for every pair. So this is one. Okay, now this next one is uh, two. Right? So this one here, I pick the first one here. This one here, I pick this one here. The next one is will be five. Okay? The next one will be 13. So make sense? So this is how we compress a file. So you give me all this data, I just pick one from every pair. Then this file will be, the size will be reduced to half. Okay? And this process is not time invariant. Uh, in this case, we pick one for every two. Uh, if every two. You can pick every, uh, one for every three or every 10. There are a lot of schemes, but all of them are not time invariant. Right? The example is in the slide, you can uh, read by yourself. For error TI system, suppose we have an input. Right? This system is an error TI system. What is the output? Suppose this system, the impulse response is uh, YN, uh, is HN. Again, impulse response. What is impulse response? It is the response to a impulse. Very simple, right? It is the response to the impulse. I'll give you this system. Eh? You input this one as a, this one. Now you get an output, yn. This one is called hn. No matter you measure this or you just do this. So this is called the impulse. Uh, this is called impulse response. If you know the impulse response, if you know the input in continuous time, what is your output? That means, uh, okay, I know xt, I know this uh, ht, what is your output for continuous? I think the homework is second line is almost due, right? So you need to practice this. What is that? Huh? You are given a system, the impulse response is HT. And give you an arbitrary input. What is the output? How to calculate this? What's the name? What's the amplitude? Amplitude? No. Start with C. Convolution. Eh? So YT equals XT convolute with a HT. You can use HT convolute with XT the uh, interchangeable. That's no big deal. One, this one convolute with this, or this one convolute with that. The same thing. Still remember this, right? And we know how to uh, do the convolution. Yeah, that's like problem number three or problem one. Uh, that's a, that's a uh, homework to do this, right? When is due time? Uh, Next time? Wednesday, right? Okay, so you need to know how to do it. Now, now you guess. For discrete system, we know the impulse response, Hn. The input is 
Xn. What is the R quad? You guess. Educated guess. What is the output? How to calculate this? Convolution. Right? Convolution. Equals what? Hn convolute with Xn. And the derivation, why this is true, okay, is in the slide, just as in the continuous time. We, last time we mentioned this in the continuous time. We derived this one, is, must be like this. And the definition is, this one definition is, still remember the definition? You need to memorize. This one equals uh, x tall, right? Times h Good, t minus tau d tau for all time to present time. Negative, right? Okay, same thing here. What is this? In discrete time, we do not have integration. Instead, we have a, we cannot do integration. Better, simpler. We do the summation, right? Add up together. So that one will be this. What what is next one? Um. Eh? This one x t change to a tau. Okay, so we this x change to a k. Oh, yeah. eh? Then this one h. What is here? T right? Still t right? T, t we use n right? N minus uh, this is tau negative tau this tau. So this one here minus k. And d tau, we cannot write d tau because this is integral. So this one, we use this one. So the integration is for tau. So this summation is for k, right? So k from all negative time to, to present time. Right? So now we already know, we know this. Right? That is the definition for discrete time convolution. Next time we are going to do with the examples of how to, to do this. Good news is this one is much easier than this one. Right? Because we like uh, multiply, we like uh, uh, summation instead of this uh, uh, integration. So next time we are going to use examples to show how to do discrete time convolution. Okay, thanks.